Hello everyone and welcome back to the commentary version of Raise Aerospace Simulating a Space Future. This is the second video and I continue the construction of Newport Depot, which will have four starships docked to it, SpaceX's starships, and they will contain methane, oxygen, and hydrogen for our future space missions. I continue to use SpaceX's Starship and Super Heavy from Tampico, not Boca Chica, and this is the model made by P.E.K.K.A. with all of the condensation and other effects. And I'm not going to exclusively use Starship and Super Heavy in the series, but don't worry about that. We will have many, many vehicles, including another one later in this video. This launch is carrying another crewed module for the depot. This is where crews of various missions will hang out while their ships get fueled up. So it's about 20 to 25 tons, very light for Starship and Super Heavy, of course, but it's bulky, it's physically large. So there aren't too many launchers other than this that can handle it. So off goes Super Heavy. Somebody asked whether Super Heavy lands. Uh, the script is made to land, but right now it needs some fine tuning. But even if, if we wanted to, we can't actually watch it land here because once it gets out of render range in Kerbal Space Program, it basically gets destroyed. So we would need to do the flight with this first and then do the flight again and then follow Super Heavy back to capture that. We can't capture both things at the same time like they do in the real life SpaceX broadcasts. So that is the rub there. So here we are rendezvousing with the depot as it is right now. It just has one crewed module and then one solar array. Uh, of course, the last thing that will happen will be the actual tanks for depot. That's the last thing to attach. And those tanks, again, will be the starships. So here, the little tugs grab the module. Everything in the series is geared towards crewed missions, so we're not going to have like just science probes or anything like that. Everything is to support crewed missions, in this case because it is Kerbal Space Program Kerbal missions. However, because of realism overhaul, the Kerbals do simulate humans. They're just really short, green humins. <laughs> so, uh, otherwise they consume the same resources, food, water, and oxygen, and that's all being simulated. So, here as I come in to dock with this module, I find out that I've made a horrible mistake. Uh, we can't dock because actually the propellant transfer portion has both docking ports on it. In other words, the one that is supposed to be there and the one that it's supposed to be docking to, I accidentally left both of those on. So we have a repair mission. This is my own design. This is the Shinkansen space plane design. Two identical planes or identical-ish planes. One helps boost up the actual space plane and then that booster one will return to the surface. That carrier plane is the one on top right now, the one that doesn't have any windows because it would have to be automated. The reason it has to be automated is because when it's coming down from this kind of suborbital trajectory instead of coming down from full orbit, it will experience a lot of g-force and that would be dangerous for the crew. So. Uh, we let it go and the automated system would be able to bring it down. Uh, where exactly is a separate question. I haven't actually figured out where it lands. We'll set that aside for now. Uh, but here is a space plane and uh, this certainly can come down safely. I'm still working on the re-entry script to tweak it so that it can land safely at a runway. Uh, that tweaking still has to be done so we aren't going to follow it down. But it can survive re-entry. I've tested that and done a video with that already. So just views from the space plane's cameras. This is carrying two Kerbals right now, Jeb and Val, and they are going to help repair our module. The module has drifted off from the station or the depot in the meantime, and so it's going to have to re-rendezvous, which is a tough call for the little tugs. The tugs are going to use the lot propellant to try to get the module back to the depot. But anyway, you can see the two tugs in the bay there, along with a uh, docking adapter. However, we're not going to try to dock to this module. Val is just going to EVA out and do the repair. And in this case, Val is using a function from the USI mod, which just says disassemble part. So she's going to just get rid of the part. Uh, that part could then be converted into material kits in USI, but we don't have any containment for those material kits, so you could basically recycle the part uh, with the USI mod. Here's the little interior of it. The 
Shinkansen Space Plane is a mix of the traditional IVA plus also an interior that the Kerbals can actually float around in and interact with stuff. But that requires a lot of colliders and Val has to get around the particular colliders over there. It's not as simple as most of the parts that you have in Kerbal Space Program. There's uh, a need for a whole lot of colliders around the interior if you're going to do something like that, which is why most people don't. So, here Val is floating up to the module. I always like these kinds of shots. EVA shots are the best. The music for this particular video were pieces that I had written a while back and I just decided to use, mainly because on the first video, uh, somebody had claimed the copyright on the first song that I had used. I kept it because it was just a revenue sharing kind of thing, but I really should be writing more music, I think. So anyway, Val removed the extra docking port that was there and now we can see the propellant docking transfer. Not exactly ideal because we've got that gold foil behind it, but we'll pretend that that just gets blown off once the propellant starts flowing or something. And Val is back into the Shinkansen. Now that's all very simple, that's great and all, but we've got another problem. You see the tugs that are currently on that module have run out of power. They, are, they only have little batteries on them and so we needed to send additional tugs. The module itself doesn't have any solar panels right now. The solar panels are on the depot. We weren't expecting it to need to operate on its own for an extended period of time, so I send uh, these other two tugs to help out. Now we have four little tugs on the module and maybe we should bring them back down to reuse them. We have a lot of reusability in here. We're using Starship and Super Heavy, which are nominally reusable. Shinkansen is nominally reusable. And so maybe we should reuse these tugs. They are very cute after all. But they have a lot of work to do here, trying to do the rendezvous. Uh, they have limited propellant and the module is very heavy uh, for them. Not very heavy for Starship, but very heavy for them. But they manage it. The orbits weren't that different after all. And now with the straight part removed, which was just a genuine mistake by me that I decided it would be interesting to work around in this way instead of trying to redo the flight, uh, the module is able to dock. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.